Carol Peterson, a 70-year-old woman with a heart both warm and resilient, had lived a life marked by ups and downs. It was as if she had mastered the art of facing adversity head-on, embracing whatever life threw at her with a grace that was both admirable and inspiring. Carol had always been a pillar of strength, not just for her family, but also for her community. Her radiant smile, however, had dimmed of late. Carol had fallen victim to a nationwide corruption scandal that had mercilessly slashed her pension, leaving her in a sea of financial instability. Carol was more than just a woman of age. She was a grandmother, a title she carried with pride and profound love. Her granddaughter, Natalie, a lively seven-year-old with an infectious laugh and a spirit as bright as a sunny day, had been left in her care following a tragedy that had robbed her of her parents. It was a responsibility Carol took up willingly, caring for Natalie with a love that was all-encompassing. However, the sudden death of Natalie's parents and the subsequent upheaval had left a profound impact on the young girl. Natalie, once a bubbling brook of joy and innocence, had retreated into herself, the world losing a bit of its color in her eyes. Her infectious laughter was replaced with silence, her radiant smile giving way to an introspective gaze that belied her tender age. The shift in Natalie's demeanor was a painful reminder of the devastating loss they had suffered. The combined pressure of grief and unexpected financial burden bore down heavily on Carol. The pension that she had been depending on to care for Natalie and herself was now a fading promise, adding an extra layer of hardship to their already difficult circumstances. It was a cruel irony, the victim of a corruption scandal being forced to bear its consequences. Yet, the indomitable spirit within Carol rose to the occasion. She sought out various odd jobs around the neighborhood, showcasing a resilience that was as impressive as it was heartbreaking. From cleaning houses to tending gardens, there was no job Carol deemed beneath her, as long as it helped ensure a secure environment for Natalie. Alongside these jobs, she started selling handmade crafts, applying skills she had honed over the years to create beautiful items. Each piece was a testament to her dedication and love for Natalie, each sale a small victory in their fight against their circumstances. Carol's situation was indeed grim, but she refused to surrender to the tide of adversity. In the face of hardship, Carol's strength and dedication served as a beacon of hope. She was a grandmother, trying to carve out a safe and secure space for her granddaughter amidst the chaos. The sheer determination to provide for Natalie and the unbending resolve to shield her from the harsh realities of their situation painted a picture of a woman who was not merely battling financial instability, but was a true warrior in the arena of life. The hardship that Carol and Natalie found themselves immersed in began to wear on Carol's once vibrant spirit. The financial burden, coupled with her constant concern for Natalie's well-being, resulted in a gradual change in Carol's demeanor. Once warm and personable, she began to withdraw from those around her. The woman, who was once known to share a comforting smile and a kind word for everyone in the neighborhood, was slowly becoming distant and irritable. Carol, who had always been an open book, was now putting up walls around her, constructing a fortress of solitude in which she was increasingly isolating herself. Her smiles became less frequent, her laughter more rare, the lines on her face seemed deeper, her eyes reflecting the weight of her troubles. Her energy seemed sapped, her spirit strained, her stress was palpable, painting her aura in shades of unease that were impossible to ignore. The neighborhood, a close-knit community, began to sense this change. They watched as the light in Carol's eyes dimmed, replaced by an unnerving emptiness that was symptomatic of her mounting anxiety. But their concern grew tenfold when they began to notice the bruises that appeared inexplicably on young Natalie's body. The vibrant child, already transformed into a shell of her former self due to her parents' untimely death, now bore physical marks that aroused alarm and empathy in equal measure among the neighbors. 
When they tried to approach Carol about Natalie, their concerns were met with dismissive rebuttals. Carol seemed to brush off their worries, maintaining that everything was under control. But her assurances rang hollow, her defensiveness only adding to their suspicions. The previously open-hearted grandmother seemed to be in denial, fostering a sense of fear and uncertainty within the community. The whispers began to circulate, discreet murmurs that hinted at darker possibilities. Every bruise, every distant look in Natalie's eyes, and every dismissive remark from Carol fanned the flames of suspicion. The neighborhood was fraught with unease, the undercurrent of worry becoming a steady hum that overshadowed the everyday tranquility. As the whispers grew louder, so did the sense of foreboding. The concern for Natalie's welfare morphed into suspicion about Carol's role in her granddaughter's distress. The burden of their circumstances had changed Carol, and the transformation was impossible to ignore. From the warm, welcoming woman, who was once the heart of the neighborhood, Carol had become an enigma that the community was struggling to decipher. The caring grandmother was now a figure of controversy, her actions and demeanor leading to speculations that only served to heighten the growing tension. The whispers persisted, echoing the community's fears and suspicions about the welfare of young Natalie under the care of her increasingly distant grandmother, Carol. After days of searching and submitting countless applications, Carol finally had something to look forward to, an interview at the local supermarket, the possibility of steady employment, a ray of hope amid her tumultuous circumstances filled her with a sense of relief. However, this opportunity came with a tough choice. She had to leave Natalie alone at home. With a heavy heart and a promise from Natalie to stay inside, Carol headed for her interview. As Carol sat in the interview room, trying her best to present a confident front, unbeknownst to her, events at home were rapidly unfolding in a direction she could never have anticipated. A black car with the discreet emblem of social services rolled up outside her home. The car's occupants, two social workers, were there following an anonymous tip regarding a child living in unfavorable conditions. The social workers were met with a sight that filled them with unease. The house was in disarray, filled with clutter and an omnipresent layer of dust. An unpleasant, musty odor permeated the air, painting a picture of neglect. As they moved through the house, they discovered Natalie alone, visibly frightened, and bearing the physical marks that matched the anonymous tip, bruises on her arms and legs. Taking in the disheveled state of the house, the apparent neglect, and the sight of the young frightened girl bearing inexplicable bruises, the social workers made a quick but difficult decision. Citing the concerns for Natalie's welfare, they decided to remove her from the home. They hoped that moving Natalie to a safe environment would protect her from any further harm while they investigated the situation. Carol returned home later that day, her mind filled with the interview and the potential job. As she approached her front door, she was greeted with silence, a silence that immediately made her heart sink. The usual bustle, the joyful chatter of Natalie, was conspicuously absent. As she entered her home, a note from social services caught her eye. Her heart pounded in her chest as she read the words that confirmed her worst fears. Natalie was gone, taken to a shelter for her own safety. The news was a crushing blow. Her strength waned, her legs gave way beneath her, and she collapsed onto the floor. Her eyes filled with tears as the despair washed over her. The home, once filled with the laughter and joy of her beloved granddaughter, was now hollow and lifeless. She felt a profound sense of loss and failure, her heart aching with the unbearable weight of Natalie's absence. Her world, already teetering on the edge of collapse due to financial woes, had shattered with Natalie's removal. Overwhelmed by the abrupt, heart-wrenching change in her circumstances, Carol gave in to her despair, her hope evaporating as the reality of her situation came crashing down. In the weeks leading up to the court hearing, time seemed to both crawl and sprint for Carol. The days passed in a haze, each moment blurring into the next as she grappled with her heart-wrenching reality. The loss of her son was a wound still that bled, and now the potential loss of Natalie 
threatened to open it afresh. Her world was spinning, with her only sense of direction being the looming court date, the day that would decide Natalie's fate and, by extension, her own. The courthouse was an imposing structure, the symbol of the system that held Natalie's future in its hands. As Carol stepped into the courtroom, her heart pounded in her chest. She could feel the weight of the room's anticipation, the gravity of the situation settling in. The murmurs of conversation echoed around her, whispers of speculation and judgment amplifying her anxiety. As the hearing began, evidence was presented to the court, photographs depicting the cluttered and dusty home, testimonies about Natalie's visible bruises. Each piece of evidence was a stab in Carol's heart, each one painting a picture of neglect and abuse. The atmosphere in the courtroom was thick with disapproval, a collective gasp of shock and judgment rippling through the crowd with each new revelation. The room seemed to close in on Carol as she listened to the damning evidence being presented against her. She protested, her voice barely more than a whisper in the courtroom's heavy silence. I love Natalie, she pleaded, her voice shaking. I've never hurt her. Her words seemed to evaporate in the tense air, her pleas unheard or simply disregarded. She was a grandmother on trial, her love for Natalie questioned, her actions misinterpreted. Her world felt as if it was falling apart, piece by piece, each piece discarded and judged by those around her. The judge, a stern figure of authority, delivered the decision. Based on the evidence presented, Natalie was to be temporarily removed from Carol's care. The words hit Carol like a sledgehammer, crushing her hopes and leaving her in a state of despair. She cried out, her voice echoing around the courtroom, a desperate plea for mercy that went unheard. The judge's gavel fell, echoing the finality of the decision. Carol's world seemed to crash around her. The prospect of losing Natalie, of being separated from her granddaughter, was too much to bear. Her protests, her pleas fell on deaf ears. The courtroom, once filled with whispers and murmurs, fell silent. All that remained was the echo of the gavel and Carol's stifled sobs. In her darkest moment, Carol felt a profound sense of loss and helplessness. She had fought for Natalie, for their future, but it felt as if it was all in vain. As the reality of the judge's decision sunk in, Carol was left in despair, the fear of losing Natalie consuming her. The court hearing was over, but for Carol, the real struggle was just beginning. Just when all seemed lost, the courtroom doors swung open, revealing a small figure standing in the doorway. It was Natalie, having somehow managed to slip away from the agent's watchful eyes. The court was struck silent, stunned at the sight of the young girl bravely stepping into the tension-filled room. She looked around, her eyes landing on Carol, and with a determined expression she walked toward the stand. Given permission to speak by the surprised judge, Natalie began her account of the events that had led them to this point. Her voice, small but clear, echoed through the courtroom, her words painting a different picture than the one presented so far. Natalie explained that the day social services visited, she had decided to clean the house to surprise Carol. With an innocence that only a child could possess, she described her struggles to move heavy boxes and clean leading to multiple falls. The bruises on her body were not marks of abuse, but the innocent results of a little girl trying to do something nice for her beloved grandmother. She further revealed that her judo classes, recommended by her therapist as a way to cope with the grief of losing her parents, were another source of the misunderstood bruises. Her narrative was a testament to her strength and resilience, a glimpse into the struggles and grief of a young girl trying to navigate the world in the aftermath of a tragic loss. The courtroom was left silent, the weight of Natalie's words sinking in. The narrative had taken an unexpected turn. The accusations of neglect and abuse dissolving, replaced by a poignant story of love, resilience, and misunderstanding. It was a moment of revelation that moved even the sternest hearts in the courtroom. The judge, visibly taken aback, considered Natalie's testimony. The reality of the situation had been misunderstood, the evidence misinterpreted. In light of this new testimony, he decided to overturn his earlier decision. The custody of Natalie was restored to Carol 
amidst a collective sigh of relief from the court. The earlier tension dissipated, replaced by a sense of justice served. As the news settled in, Carol was overcome with relief and joy. The fear of losing Natalie, which had consumed her, was replaced with a newfound hope for the future. The loving embrace between the grandmother and the granddaughter resonated in the courtroom, symbolizing their victory against adversity. Their story ended with a hopeful note, leaving a profound impact on everyone in attendance. It was a testament to the enduring love and resilience between a grandmother and her granddaughter, demonstrating their courage in overcoming adversity. Despite the trials they faced, their bond remained unbroken, serving as a reminder of the power of love and the importance of understanding amidst judgment. Their narrative underscored a poignant truth. Adversity may test the bonds of love, but it also has the power to strengthen them.